Hi, my name is Paris Wolf. Today we're going to work on cryptography. Question 11. What list maintained by a certificate authority that contains serial numbers of certificates that have been revoked? The certificate revocation list is what CRL stands for, and that is what contains the serial numbers on the certificates that have been revoked. CA stands for certificate authority. CP stands for certificate policy, which is a document that defines the rules and requirements for the issuance and management of digital certificates. A CSR, that's a certificate signing request, and that's generated by the entity that wants a digital certificate, and they send that off to the certificate authority that then can generate the digital certificate. Question 12. What is the key size of WPA, Wi-Fi Protected Access? That is 128 bits, while 40 bits, that would be for something used like with WEP. WEP stands for Wired Equivalency Privacy and is one of the original, if not the original, uh, Wi-Fi protocols that they utilized, and that can be broken within seconds. Question 13. Where is the WPA personally typically implemented? So WPA personal, that stands for Wi-Fi protected access, and you would normally see that for a home network and coffee shops. So something that you would use right now for WPA personal in your home network, you're gonna see it's gonna have like a pre-shared key, or that means everyone uses the same password. While in a enterprise environment, you would see that as WPA Enterprise, they're going to have a radius server, which can, is going to use for user authentication. So you're going to have like username, password. Each individual has their own setup. Sometimes there's additional um, ways to log in, such as a common access cap, common access card, or um, something you are, such as a retina scan or fingerprint, and high security environments for WPA Enterprise. Question 14, which cipher is used with WPA2? Uh, so WPA2, let's talk about each of the options on here. So RC5, RC5 is a symmetric key block cipher encryption algorithm that was later replaced by AES. AES, Advanced Encryption Standard Counter Mode with cipher block chaining is used with WPA2. Uh, typically you see AES utilized in the government because it's considered um, widely the most accepted standard and typically the best. However, depending on the application, maybe a different encryption may suit the enterprise's needs. WEP is a outdated and uses RC4, which is deprecated in modern security practices. Uh, TKIP, that stands for Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, and that's a security protocol which uses Wi-Fi networks to enhance the security of data transmission. Uh, the improvement that it added was hashing the initialization vector and the secret key, but was also later replaced by AES. Question 15. Which best describes a replay attack? The answer here would be a malicious attack that intercepts a legitimate communication session to gain unauthorized access to a system. So what happens is that you, let's say a user has a legitimate session um, to an outside source over the internet and the bad actor, they intercept that message and your credentials are that you use to log in by intercepting those packets and later they try to resubmit that to um, gain access to that system and that's why they call it a replay attack because they're capturing that in the middle of transfer and then reissuing that to gain access. A radius server that is used for authentication and authorization that manages user access to a network. TKIP, we talked a little bit about that on the last question and then using a stream cipher as it typically is much faster than a block cipher while this is true, um, stream ciphers, you're going to see that typically for live streaming or uh, anything like voice over IP, anything that is live and happening versus a block cipher, which is um, typically for larger blocks. Used for, so block ciphers are, are used for um, like data at rest, file encryption, and data communication. 
That, that would be a better definition for that. Let's take a look at the next question. Question 16. Which picture displays a VPN using ESP tunnel mode? So first I want to talk a little bit about the VPN, which is a virtual private network, a technology that allows you to create a secure and private network connection over the internet. In the first image here, we have transport mode. So the data is encrypted in this packet here. However, the IP address, everyone's going to be able to see that as it travels across the internet. And versus the tunnel mode is we'd pretend like this 8888 is right here. Well, that's encrypted. So all of this data is now encrypted and it places another IP address in front of that. So it's another IP packet in front. And the reason it does that is that if anyone were to intercept this message, well, now they only know this IP address. So when it reaches the other side of the destination, that router rips this IP address. Question 17, UDP port 500 is used for what? Let's take a look at all the options here. So SNMP trap messages, that's port 162, and is specifically used for traps or notifications that alerts the system if there's any sort of um, event failures or security breaches or other significant events to the NMS. The IPSEC key exchange, that is port 500, and that's used for internet key exchange protocol. LDAP, that's port 389, and that's associated with lightweight directory, directory access protocol. SMTPS, that is for port 465 and was previously de designated for simple mail transfer protocol secure, but that service is now deprecated. So the answer would be IPSEC key exchange. Question 18, what best describes a protocol? Okay, let's take a look at the options here. A set of rules and conventions that governs how data is transmitted and received over a network. It defines the format of data packets, the order of data exchange, error handling, and other communication aspects. Yes, that is exactly what describes a protocol. The other option on here, a numeric identifier used to distinguish different services or processes on a single device within a network. Ports are used in conjunction with the IP address to route data to the appropriate application or service. So whenever your IP pack is sending out, it's going to have an IP address, of, for example, 8888 colon, and then let's say a um, port of 53 for DNS. Question 19, which cipher best describes a Caesar cipher? Let's take a look at all the options on here. Uses a grid to map letters into numeric values. That's a bifid cipher. Uh, which is a classical substitution method and uses elements of the Polybius and Playfair cipher. Hashing algorithm, definitely not the answer. Each letter in the plaintext is shifted forward or backward in the alphabet according to the chosen, sh chosen shift value. That is a Caesar cipher. Um, as for example, if A is being shifted three letters, it would go to D. And the last option on here, a keyword or phrase chosen by the sender and known to the recipient. It is a 26 by 26 grid of alphabets. That is a veneer cipher. Which best describes a veneer cipher? Well, we actually just looked at that answer there, and that would be a keyword or phrase chosen by the sender and known to the recipient. It's a 26 by 26 grid of alphabets. Let's take a look at the other options on here. We have the 5x5 five five matrix with non-repeating characters. That would be the Playfair. We have also known as a zigzag cipher. They're talking about the railroad cipher. It's a type of transportation cipher, rearranges the letters of a message to make it harder to read. The name rail fence cipher comes from the way the letters are arranged in a zigzag pattern that resemble a fence made of rails. And then the last option, shape of its symbols resembles pig pens or styes, kind of gives you the answer uh, within that definition of the pig pen cipher. 